In today's episode, former Top 100 ATP player Jeff Salzenstein will help you develop one of the most important shots in tennis, the serve. Hi, this is Jeff Salzenstein, and you're watching On Court with USPTA. The serve is one of the most important shots in tennis. 50% of all points start with this all-important shot. I went from a guy who had a weak serve as a junior to having one of the best serves on the ATP Tour. So let's take a look at the most important components of the serve that I've identified that can help you right away. Follow these tips and strategies and you can develop your serve into a weapon. Having a solid stance can make all the difference with your serve. If you have problems with consistency, balance, or rhythm, I want you to simplify your serve by getting into a platform stance. You're gonna benefit from being in a platform stance because you'll have less moving parts, you'll be able to jump off both legs more effectively, and you're gonna improve your shoulder turn because the position of your back foot allows you to have a natural shoulder turn without even having to think about it. So Thomas, I know that you already have a platform stance. You changed from a pinpoint to a platform and you told me that it helped you with your consistency and it helped you serve a lot better. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of your serves right now. Okay. I can already see that you've got a great motion and uh, there's some great stuff that we're gonna talk about here. Let's do another one. All right, let's talk about the stance. One thing I wanna point out is that you do have some wiggle room. What I mean by that is, what I like to see is the toe of the back foot is lined up with the midfoot of the front foot, okay? You can line it up there, or you can actually slide the back foot that direction where it's actually outside the heel, exactly. Thomas, go ahead and get into a, a place where you feel comfortable in your stance. So we can see, and, and go ahead and put a little weight on your back foot. So we can see that his heel is somewhere between the midfoot and the heel of the front foot. This is a great position to be in, and it sets him up to feel very, very stable. The whole idea is that if you can eliminate the variables in your serve, if you can make it as simple and as efficient as possible, that's going to make a huge difference in improving your consistency, your power, and your placement. When you bring your back foot up, go ahead and bring your back foot up and hold it, it's more difficult to create a shoulder turn here. He's gonna feel stressed. It's gonna be a lot more stress to create turn there. Now, again, some of the best servers in the world, Goran Ivanisevic, he was able to do that. For us mere mortals that are rec players or junior players or those aspiring to go to higher levels, it's harder to create that shoulder turn. Now, Thomas, get into your awesome platform stance and show us that great shoulder turn. Great serve, Thomas. Thomas, go ahead and get into your stance. We're gonna go slow motion, kind of moving through this first move to show this shoulder turn. So go ahead and start to make that move. So because of this stance, because this foot has slid back in this position, he's able to easily turn his shoulders. And that's what you'll see all the great servers do. They have a great shoulder turn when they make their first move. And what a lot of people don't know is that it starts with the feet. If you get your feet set in the right place, then you can have an awesome shoulder turn. Guys like Roger Federer, Pete Sampras, arguably two of the best servers of all time, they really push off of both legs when they serve. So go ahead and get into your platform stance and show me how you can jump off of both legs and push off the ground. I love that natural leg drive that you get and just by not moving your back foot, by feeling it stable, you can get more drive out of your back leg. Obviously, you can help you get more power, more stability, and that's exactly what we're looking for with the platform stance on your serve. When you move that back foot, you're only able to get off the front foot, but using that platform stance, you get more power from your back leg, and that's going to help you have a better serve.
Now that we have the stance in order, it's time to focus on the first move. The first move is one of the most important components if you want to develop your serve into a weapon. Let's take a look at some ways that you can improve your first move right away. This is a part of the serve that is often overlooked. It's not focused on enough. And you'd be surprised that if you can make a solid first move, everything can flow from there. One of the common problems that I see with a first move with many players that serve is that when they get into their ready position and start serving, they move from the arms first. So this arm stays very straight and the racket even opens up like this and all arm is being used. Instead, what we want to learn is how to move from the shoulders. So Thomas, let's go ahead and go back to the back fence right now and work on that. By making this first move against the back fence, you're going to notice that your shoulders are going to move properly, and then the strings are going to be hitting the back fence like this. Go ahead and keep your chin over your shoulder when you make that first move. Good. And you can even do it with your eyes closed. It's going to give you a greater sense of awareness with your body. That's exactly right. You can, you can only really turn your shoulders when you make this first move against, against the fence. Now after making that great first move for several reps, it's time to get back up to the baseline and we're going to hit some serves and you're going to immediately notice that you can hit better serves with a better first move after you do this drill. Show me that first move with a great serve. Awesome stuff. Give me another one. So just by practicing on the back fence, by making a strong first move with your shoulders, that's going to allow you to step up to the line and make a great first move and hit awesome serves. Oftentimes players, they take the racket and it comes up together like this. What I want you to do is I want you to focus, instead of bringing the arms up together like this, I want you to get into a three-quarter serve. And the three-quarter serve involves starting with the racket down by your pocket. The strings are gonna be facing the front knee like this. You certainly don't wanna have the racket laid open or flipped open like this. You wanna have it closed. You want the strings to be facing the knee. And then what you'll do is you're going to lead with your tossing hand and then the racket hand and arm is going to come up after. Great serve, Thomas. So what I like about that is that the racket is just hanging by your side. So you don't have to try to time the rhythm with this first move from a full position. You can get used to using the three quarters serve motion to establish that delayed racket arm moving up towards the trophy position and into hitting the serve. Making a great first move on your serve gets everything moving in the right direction. The trophy position is another key component of the serve that you need to master. This is the midway point where everything needs to look and feel just right. Let's take a look at some drills that can help you get into the correct trophy position to hit a very effective serve. Once you get your stance and your first move down, now it's time to take a look at the trophy position. And unfortunately, I see a lot of problems in the trophy position with many serves out there. Now the good news is that all of this can be corrected with a drill that I call the trophy static hold. This is an exercise where you get into the trophy position and you hold that position for time. So Thomas, go ahead and get into that trophy hold position without your legs. So you can actually, yeah, we'll do it without the legs first. So you can set the elbow right here. You've got the racket face closed like this. It is not laid open, it's closed. This arm is outstretched, fingertips up to the sky. So go ahead and let's do that again without the legs. So let's say that the person does it and their elbow is too low. I can immediately correct them and then we can hold that for time. Now the next phase, and this time you're going to use your legs. So just as if you're gonna serve, you're gonna bend your knees, not quite as much as the normal knee bend that you have in your serve. Go ahead and move to the trophy position and hold it. So nice knee bend. He can feel where his elbow is in space. Tossing arm is extended up. He can even close his eyes to create even more body awareness around what his trophy position feels like. Welcome back. 
Getting into the correct trophy position is extremely important if you want to take your serve to the next level. The racket position at this stage is key to generate more acceleration and speed at impact. Let's look at another drill to help develop the trophy position. In addition to the trophy static hold, one of the most powerful drills that you can practice is what I call the elbow the enemy. And elbow the enemy essentially involves getting into the ready position for the serve, and then when you move into the trophy position, you're going to exaggerate, pretending like you're elbowing someone behind you. So go ahead and do that for me, Thomas. So you want to feel like you're essentially elbowing someone back here. A lot of times players get into the trophy position and their elbow's down here or it's up here. But if you can get that feeling that you're elbowing your enemy, that can really make a big difference right away. Let's go ahead and hit some serves and I really want you to exaggerate yourself elbowing the enemy. Let's do that again, Thomas. So there are many side benefits to that, and one of them is feeling that shoulder turn increase. Thomas, go ahead and hit another serve, exaggerating that concept of elbowing the enemy. It's an excellent serve, an excellent move with elbowing the enemy. That's a quick tip that can make a huge difference right away with your serve. It's so important to get into the proper trophy position so that you can move into the next phase of the serve in the right way. The racket drop is a key aspect of the serve where you can see if the serving arm is totally relaxed. If you can learn to have your arm and hand relax behind your body, you can accelerate up to the ball properly and hit amazing serves. The racket drop phase of the serve is an important part of the serve where I can see if a player knows how to relax or not. And if I look at a rec player, a junior player, that isn't able to drop the racket correctly, I know that they're probably gripping the racket too tight. So let's take a look at Thomas right now doing it the wrong way, and then of course we're going to correct him with some great tips and drills. Thomas, go ahead and grab the racket like you normally do for the serve. Now you already hold it pretty low, but I see some players that are too choked up and it creates too much tension. I even see the wrist pretty locked and that's going to affect your racket drop. So what I like to do is to start that tip or that drill, the lazy continuous swings, where you move the ring finger and the pinky finger off of the racket. So just feel that, yeah, feel it just dangle in your hand. You can start to swing the racket and feel that racket drop behind you. Let's get into the continuous swing drill right now. One of the big keys is to keep relaxing your hand as you take it back so that you can feel the racket drop behind you. And what you're going to do with the continuous swing drill is you're going to do one practice swing and you're going to let the racket swing up like this and all the way through so you're not going to stop. You'll do one swing and then you're going to hit the ball from there. So Thomas, go ahead and follow that formula. You're going to do one practice swing, racket's going to come all the way through. That was a great continuous swing right there. I really liked how the racket came all the way through at the end with the practice swing. And another tip that you can add to this is you can tap your back foot at the end. That's really going to help your balance. And so at the end of the swing, you're going to feel like you can tap your back foot. You don't want to step through and lose your balance. You want to keep that back foot back right now because we're taking our legs out of play. So Thomas, go ahead and do that and tap your back foot. That was awesome. Awesome swing, Thomas. Now what I want to see happen is Thomas is going to add the leg. So it's one more progression to this drill. You've, he's done the continuous swing without the legs. Now he's going to add the legs. That was an excellent use of the legs there. So that's your continuous swing progression that can help you with your racket drop. So the key is to make sure your hand and arm are relaxed so that you can have a continuous fluid motion. 
Welcome back. We've seen several ways to develop a better serve. Now let's develop a better contact point and finish. One huge component of the serve is the contact point, and I really like to focus on ball position. The problem is that many players don't have the correct ball position when they make contact. When he reaches up with his racket above his body, a lot of times the racket is outside the serving shoulder. So that is going to produce more slice instead of topspin. And all the great servers have a natural topspin component, and that's related to the ball position. The most efficient contact point is to make sure that you put your racket above your serving shoulder when you make contact. So when Thomas reaches up, you're gonna notice that the racket strings are above the shoulder. They can even move over towards the ear. This creates a nice angle to generate the right amount of topspin. So let's go ahead and have Thomas hit a serve with the wrong toss, the wrong contact point, where the ball is outside the shoulder. And then we'll have him do it the right way where he's making contact above the shoulder or even closer to the ear. So that's the problem with having your contact point outside your serving shoulder. The ball's gonna be too flat, you're gonna have too much slice, and you're not gonna have the consistency that you desire. Now I want Thomas to hit a serve where the contact point is above the serving shoulder or even closer to the ear. Great serve, Thomas. That's gonna give you the natural topspin that you're looking for by putting the toss in the right place and getting that perfect contact point on your serve. A great drill you can do is to start serving from your knees. Thomas is gonna choke up on the racket because if he swings with his hand in the normal position, he's gonna hit the racket tip on the ground. So we wanna make sure that he's choked up and then he can go ahead and toss the ball and get that ball in the correct contact position above his shoulder. Thomas did it perfectly there. The ball was in the right place. It's above his serving shoulder. He's not reaching for it. He's on perfect balance. And this is going to help him improve his serve dramatically because he's getting the ball in the right place. I really like this drill from the knees to improve your contact point because you're gonna be able to take the legs out of play and you can focus solely on getting the toss in the right position in relation to your body. The advantage of having a solid contact point is that you're gonna be able to get just the right amount of topspin to allow you to have the ball control that you're looking for on your serve. Let's talk about the finish now. This is the last component of the serve that you need to take a look at. Now, a lot of times it's a natural byproduct of the serve, but sometimes you can make a few tweaks that make a huge difference. Thomas is gonna go ahead and hit a serve right now. I'm gonna take a look at it, and then I'm gonna make a few minor adjustments that are gonna make a big difference. So Thomas hit a great serve. You can see how his hand naturally came through. It's down by his opposite pocket. Now, what I want him to do is I want him to actually exaggerate next time, turning the wrist so that the palm is up a little bit more. And that's gonna force the strings to turn up a little bit more. I feel this really helps servers with ball control. Hit your serve totally normal, but then exaggerate the palm turning up more at the end. Good, that's excellent. So you can see the wrist is has turned so that the palm is up, the strings are facing up towards the sky more, and again, this really helps with ball control and developing even more topspin on your serve. Now let's get into one more bonus tip for you with the finish. I like to have players actually stop their finish a little bit sooner, and the cue that I like to give is to have the player stop their finish at the belly button, and this forces the player to pronate faster on the serve. So go ahead and try that, Thomas. You're gonna stop right in front of your belly button and actually go ahead and turn your wrist so that the palm faces up. Excellent, now the next time I'm gonna have him even try to stop it sooner. Amazing, great serve right there. Look at the wrist, look at the palm, look at the strings facing up to the sky. 
This is the little subtle tip that can make a huge difference, not only with your ball control, but with pronation on the serve. Now the serve was my dominating weapon on the tour. It helped me break the top 100 for the first time at the age of 30. And now I've had the chance to be able to share these tips and strategies with you to solve your serve problems. So I want you to go ahead and get out on the court and improve your serve today. If you need more help with your game, contact a local USPTA professional at USPTAfindapro.com.